This video will discuss the pendulum and a little bit of general uh, information on simple harmonic motion and its relation to circular motion. Oh, a pendulum, you can construct one of these easily. If you would uh, hang a mask from a string, be careful your string is strong enough to hold the mask, keep your feet out from underneath the pendulum. Uh, if you would pull the mask to one side and have the top anchored someplace, and then release, the pendulum will swing back and forth, back and forth, and the period is the time for the pendulum to get back to the starting position. Uh, so a swing outward, a swing back, that is the period, that length of time. It does turn out that the pendulum is not exactly simple harmonic motion. If you recall, for simple harmonic motion, the displacement and the acceleration must be proportional. For a pendulum, moving on the arc of a circle, uh, there is a, an effect of the angle that uh, causes the pendulum to just be slightly different than simple harmonic motion. If, for, if the angle is small, uh, most people would say under 15 degrees for the uh, uh, maximum angle away from the vertical, then the pendulum will obey an equation for its period. That equation is 2 pi times the square root of the length of the pendulum in meters divided by your local acceleration due to gravity. For most people, 9.8 meters per second squared. You do need standard metric units here to uh, calculate the period. I would ask you uh, just what length of uh, string would you choose? What length of pendulum would you choose if you want a period of, uh, oh, maybe 6.28 seconds? 6.28 seconds. What length would you choose for the string of your pendulum? Well, you might realize pi is 3.14 and some other digits, so 2 times that is where I came up with the 6.28. So I need 1 for the square root factor, and that's achieved if the length is 9.8 meters. Divided by 9.8 meters per second squared, I get a factor of 1 here. So in order to achieve a period of 6.28 seconds, you do need a substantially long pendulum, perhaps in a museum, uh, where the length is 9.8 meters. But the period is 2 times pi times the square root of the length in meters divided by g. Do that calculation. If you're trying to find the period, uh, do the calculation of length divided by g first, then take the square root of that value, then multiply by the 2 pi. And any one of these might be the unknown. You might be given the period and being asked to find the length, or you might uh, be given the length and the period and asked to calculate the local value of the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, so drawing of the pendulum, there is a restoring force. The weight, mg, downward, and the tension along the string, there is a force that's perpendicular. Uh, this mg, you can do a component that balances the tension, and then the component perpendicular to the line of the string is the uh, mg sine theta that's in the, the drawing here, and that is back towards the equilibrium position and it is a variable force because the theta changes and uh, our arc length here, s equals r theta, uh, it does turn out that the displacement is not strictly uh, proportional to the acceleration. But if theta is small, then the sine theta value will be just about equal to theta. Uh, you can do that experiment on your calculator, put your calculator into radian mode, and take the sine of 0.01 radians, see how close that is to 0.01. Take the sine of 0.02 radians, see how close that is to 0.02, and so forth and so on. Um, and that would be a, a sort of a numerical experiment. But we do have a restoring force. It's almost a situation where the acceleration is proportional to the displacement. Um, but this force, mg sine theta, and our displacement s equals r theta, We've got a little a trig function uh, variation in the, uh, that keeps the relationship uh, not quite proportional. Okay, so that's on, on the pendulum. I might also mention on the pendulum, uh, the length is measured from the anchor point here to the center of mass, as this drawing correctly shows. 
uh, the length of the pendulum where we attach to the center mass not to just the length of the string not including the full diameter perhaps if you have a spherical uh, mass attached but to the center of mass that's the length of the pendulum and let me go back a little bit further uh, the period does not depend on the amplitude in this calculation but if you would do an experiment you would find that the period does depend on the angle you release from does depend on the theta value slightly um, so that's that's different than the spring for the spring the period does not depend on the amplitude of the motion but there is a little bit of uh, connection here um, so simple pendulum what about circular motion if we would shine some light straight down on an object that's moving around in a circle and we just observe the shadow what do you think is true about where the shadow has its maximum speed imagine this object going around shadow down on the ground where does the shadow have maximum speed and you should be saying at the center and perhaps that would remind you that uh, for the spring and for the pendulum for that matter uh, at this equilibrium point we have the maximum speed for the mass in the system then what about when the mass here is coming straight up or the mass is going straight down how much motion do we have for the shadow and you should say zero zero velocity and again that's in agreement with what happens for the spring or for the pendulum at the amplitude of the motion we have for an instant the velocity equal to zero it does turn out that this shadow it does undergo simple harmonic motion the shadow will show an acceleration as it uh, goes back and forth here and that acceleration is proportional to the uh, displacement of our shadow away from x equals zero so the shadow of an object moving in, in circular motion does show simple harmonic motion it does show simple harmonic motion um, so summarized here uh, highest speed zero acceleration at the center of the motion uh, zero speed largest acceleration at the endpoints of the motion same as we had for the uh, uh, case of the spring and the pendulum so if we would put some paper and let that paper go underneath the uh, system and somehow make this shadow uh, lay ink down on the paper we would observe this wave shape and there's a connection between waves and simple harmonic motion what about damped simple harmonic motion well in simple harmonic motion we ignore friction usually we just the spring goes back and forth to the same amplitude all the time and that spring system has a certain energy it, that's given to it the spring or the pendulum as we pull back on the mass and easiest to talk about the spring systems as the uh, mass is pulled to one side we extend the spring and the spring system picks up an energy of potential energy one half k x squared we've described that previously one half times the force constant times the square of the displacement of the spring one half k x squared so that's an energy if we let go of the mass and we're on a horizontal table with no friction then the mass goes back and forth forever and it'll get back to the uh, full amplitude the release point every cycle um, in the midpoint we'll have a kinetic energy one half mv squared that is equal to the one half k x squared at the endpoints of the motion and this energy will move back and forth between uh, kinetic and potential forms so not so with the damped harmonic motion with the damped harmonic motion in the damping situation you can see here that the object is not getting back to the full amplitude in fact each cycle the maximum x value is decreasing what's happening to the energy of the system well, we could calculate the energy at these endpoints with one half k x squared you'll notice that the x is getting smaller every cycle the energy of the system is getting smaller every cycle and of course that can be due to friction friction dissipating energy getting it out of the mechanical form though not potential not uh, kinetic but 
just thermal energy warming up the surface that the mass is sliding on or pushing air back and forth warming up the air whatever is creating the friction but energy is leaving the system and the consequence of that is that the motion is damped the maximum x value decreases each cycle uh, so damped uh, harmonic motion so friction can cause this uh, friction on a surface for air friction uh, various means uh, can be used to create this and it's not always bad the shock absorbers in a car uh, you want that shock absorber to remove energy from the oscillation of the body of the car after you go over rough railroad tracks you don't want the car to keep going up and down for the next mile or two miles so the shock absorbers can remove energy from that oscillation and uh, give you a nice smooth ride again so damped harmonic motion the damping motion we're extracting energy from the system so each cycle this X max maximum the amplitude decreases we can also go the other way energy can be put into an oscillation and this is the subject called resonance suppose we just give a little push to our spring system going back and forth at the proper time so let's imagine the spring oscillating left and right on a table when the spring gets to its full right position someone pushes to the left gently now that's giving a little extra energy at the proper time when the mass is about to move to the left and we're going to have extra energy in the system the amplitude is going to increase on the playground a parent pushes their child uh, when the swing gets back towards them and the swing is about to move away from them that's the proper time to give a little push it's not the proper time to push on the swing when the swing is coming towards you that would be work against the uh, motion at that time and that would take energy away so you can add energy in this resonance effect by pushing at the proper time every cycle and the resonance uh, word really ties into matching the frequency of the harmonic motion now we've talked about frequency frequency is one divided by period if you want to calculate it so we want to push with the same frequency as the frequency of the swing uh, so each time the swing gets back close to us and it's about to head away from us we give a little push the swing moves back and forth comes back to us when it's about to move away from us we give a little push you do not need a big push to create a large amplitude you just need to put in more energy than is being lost to friction and the amplitude can increase perhaps to a dangerous situation so uh, don't try this on the playground to the full extent but uh, the, these resonant situations do exist where the push comes at the proper time each cycle and systems have a natural frequency of oscillation you know for the playground swing it's essentially a pendulum so that's has a period 2 pi square root of length divided by g and if you take that period divided into one you get the frequency the natural frequency of the playground swing um, buildings have a natural frequency and earthquakes have waves that travel through the earth and can deliver a push can deliver energy to that building if the building has the same natural frequency as the frequency of the earthquake waves then that earthquake can build up a large amplitude for the building and put too much stress on its uh, structure and uh, topple the building uh, so producing uh, resonance on uh, on strings a piano here being illustrated um, you can sing if you can hold a, a good pitch and cause one of these strings to oscillate if the sound has the same frequency as the natural frequency of the string the sound waves will be pushing back and forth on the string and it will pick up that uh, that energy and go into its own oscillation so that would be another resonance situation um, if you hold a, a rubber ball and a little elastic uh, rubber band and move your finger up and down at the proper time you can build up the amplitude if you push with the or pull up your finger at the natural frequency of the motion or if you go to real high frequency you can uh, 
sometimes add energy to the oscillation, other times you take away energy and the ball doesn't do much. A um, little graph here of natural frequency and amplitude. If our natural frequency and the driving frequency match up, so that would be right here, F sub naught, if that driving frequency, when that small force is applied, is at the natural frequency, and there's not much energy being taken away from the system, then the amplitude can increase. If there's, at the same time we're pushing on the system, also a loss due to friction of some sort, then the amplitude won't build up as much. Um, you can uh, watch this on YouTube, Tacoma Narrows Bridge, um, built in the 1940s and collapsed due to wind creating a resonance situation with the bridge and causing the bridge to go into motion here that eventually cracked the steel girders that uh, were holding the bridge together. Uh, no one was killed in this, uh, but uh, it was a great loss for the uh, people who needed to go across to Comaneros. So you might uh, make up a list of questions here regarding pendulum, regarding simple harmonic motion, damp simple harmonic motion, and resonance in uh, harmonic motion, and uh, practice working some problems, ask your instructor some questions.